All right. So, hey, welcome everybody to uh, this Present Your Product Deep Dive. My name is Kyle Valton. I'm the director here of Port Labs. This is the port. This is the basement area you're looking at underneath the main event floor of Port Labs, where we have a lot of engineering teams uh, building products and everything in Oakland, California. Uh, our guest for this series is going to be Melissa with Can Can Studios, who is going to be taking over the show um, in a very short minute here. But one thing I do want to say is um, this is all part of a program offered by the Small Business Development Center, the SBDC. They have paid for us to basically offer this content to you for free. And uh, so we thank them for that. So uh, with that, Melissa, you want to go ahead and take it away, introduce yourself and the content? Sure, sure. Let's go. How it will work tonight is that uh, we're going to go through a lot of theory. We're, I'm going to move fast, right? But throughout, there's going to be exercises, and they're going to be kind of flash exercises. So it's just moments for you to brainstorm, to get an idea, to get a feel. And like we're kind of going to start building a brand together throughout the evening. So uh, try to have, uh, well, try have something to write with, uh, something to, to write on. Um, and again, when we go through these, you might have some questions, but like I'll leave some time at the end so that we can review what we built together. So think about either a project you're working on, a project you would want to be working on, or just keep in mind something that you want to, you know, focus your energy tonight. Um, Again, I'm going to start presenting. I'm going fast. There's a lot. Um, branding is dear and near to my to my heart. So I wanted to be able to share as much as possible with you. Uh, that said, the next sessions are going to be lighter. We'll be able to review. We'll have some time to digest during the week and the next week. Um, and as Kyle mentioned, I'm I'm available to dig in deeper and um, answer some questions. So let me start this presentation. So uh, it's called present your product, the first session, and um, really present your your product is branding, right? Uh, the essence of it is branding. So we're going to explore what branding means, its power, and how we can develop a brand uh, on our own. So what is branding? Uh, branding establishes the why behind a company, right? It's, um, it's a reason for being, it communicates the reason for being and distinguishes from other companies. Uh, the goal of branding is really to earn the space in the minds of your target audience and become their preferred um, option for doing business. And it's not a nice to have nowadays with all the noise and so many brands out here. It is um, what makes your brand memorable. Uh, it should be easy to explain, easy to share. It should communicate your values, build trust, build your tribe, your community, and stand out from the competition. So we're going to go through three main elements tonight um, about that are key elements to branding, and that's your positioning, your essence, your messaging. Those are our can-can terms. Uh, you will hear them expressed in different ways by different people, but we'll explain further what all of these mean. But before we jump in, so who is Can Can uh, and why are we here talking about branding? So we're an agency, a market a creative agency, and we turn, we say that we turn visionary ideas into experience uh, because that's what we love to do. We love to create, to take things that are abstract in people's minds and create something tangible um, with them. We uh, ask the hard questions and we partner with teams committed to making change. And that's good change. <laughs> and uh, I am at uh, Ken Ken. I am the chief experience officer. If you didn't know what CXO meant, this, it, it's a fun term. But basically I'm in charge of all user experience um, for the company. So we've worked with a, a few cool people. 
Uh, we work with some corporates, some small, medium businesses, uh, some startups, uh, and a lot of folks in the education uh, world as well. So we do anything from traditional branding to anything that's uh, brand strategy, everything that's needed to communicate uh, a brand vision. So that's animation, user experience, product design, brand design, name it. So let's jump in. If there's one thing that I want you to remember from tonight is that your brand is who communicates with your customer when you're not in the room, right? It's who sells uh, for you. It's who builds loyalty for you. And it's who builds community for you when you're not in the room. So let's start with positioning. Where do you sit? So this is going to be our first pillar. Uh, where do you sit in the market? In that, we're going to explore your mission and vision, values, target audience, your unique unique value proposition, and a bonus that I left at the end of the presentation that you will all be getting um, after this session is market positioning. So your mission and, and your mission and vision statement, your vision and mission statement, some people call it just vision statement, um, really is a way to articulate why you exist. It's your North Star. It's in, in, in times of, in tough times and good times with your team, it's really what's going to keep you focused, give you a vision, uh, remind yourself and the team of your purpose and your aspiration. So the first part, and start thinking about your project and or what you want to work on. Um, the first part is the vision, how you envision the world. And here are some examples of what that looks like. Um, Casper, we're here to awaken the potential um, of a well-rested world. IKEA, better everyday life for regular people. So it's how you want the world to change. It's your hope for the future of this world. Then the second part of this is your mission. Very similar, but it's framed a different way. The mission is how you will achieve this. So Casper, in this, in this example, we're setting a new standard in sleep innovation. IKEA in this context, like we offer a wide range of well-designed function, functional home furnishing at low prices for so that they can reach as many people as they can. So this your mission is how you will get there. And then your vision statement is putting the two together. Uh, a vision statement, it should be aspirational should be ambitious, it should be practical, achievable, and general and broad. The general and broad part is because you want to be broad enough so that your future business, as it grows, as it scales, as it, be, it gets more products, that, that is big enough that, that you can fit more products in there or services. So here are a few kind of Famous examples that you might have seen before. Uh, some of my favorite TED spread ideas. Uh, IKEA to create a better everyday life for many people. Nike to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. So all of these are super short and very aspirational and it merges their vision of how they want to see the world and how they will do that, how they will play a role in that. So let's try it. For your project, for your brand, for what you're thinking of, let's take just two minutes and jot down. So these are, again, super fast, just top of mind level exercises. Write down uh, quick ideas of what your vision is for the world through this company, through this brand that you're building. What is your mission? how you're going to get there through your business, through your company. And then bringing them together to write a vision statement, which is your brand promise. So we get two minutes to do that.
And again, your vision is the future you want to create. How you see the world, your hopes for this world. Mission, how your company is going to um, help build that vision. And the vision statement is a mix of the two. Twenty more seconds. Again, this is high level. Get your ideas out. Doesn't have to be worded well for now. This takes time. All right, awesome. Um, so let's move on. On to your core values. So again, these Everything that we're going to go through today, um, they take time, right? To, to, to figure out, like, to write down a proper mission and vision and a vision statement with, like, wordsmithed and that's really aspirational and, like, that talks to everything in a few words, that takes time. Obviously, we're not going to get to perfection today, but it's a good brainstorm to get your, uh, your brain thinking about that. So next on the positioning uh, topic, your values, your core values of your business. So what do you stand for? And how is the business going to conduct itself? So the core values can be anything like transparency, quality, affordability, innovation, um, trust, integrity, equity, human accessibility. Uh, these are just like examples of what values could be for your business. Examples um, of, of, of values of communities, we have HubSpot. Uh, their values are being humble, empathetic, adaptable, remarkable, and transparent. And a business like Patagonia, their value is best to create the best product, uh, to cause no unnecessary harm to the earth, uh, to protect nature, not bound by convention. So they question the status quo. So back to you. What, for your project, for your brand, what are your core values? Uh, what do you stand for? We're going to take another minute and a half, two minutes to jot down some values for yourself. And it does not have to be from this list. This is, these are just examples. Think outside of that. You probably already know these. These are probably the way you are and act in the world and show up in the world, right? Give another 30 seconds. Great. All right, so moving on to uh, your target audience. Who are you solving for? So uh, creating a business really is about solving a problem, right? There's a problem in the world and um, you have to be clear on who your target audience is. Uh, one way that I love to do this is to draw a quadrant um, where your top left quadrant is going to be an image uh, of the person, of your target, their name, 
um, we really want to paint a clear picture of who your target is. And of course, you're going to serve many different people, right? But narrowing down on one, we usually, we tend to keep one persona. Um, so target persona is, is means the same thing. Um, we try to say to uh, keep one persona. Sometimes it will happen that you will have you will have two, but let's focus on one right now. So top left is a day in the life. Uh, bottom left is demographic. You can start drawing this on your piece of paper. Top right is their habits. And the bottom right are their needs. And here's an example of this. So here our target is Zena, and we put an image of Zena. Um, she's 32 years old. She lives in uptown Oakland in a small apartment, has a French bulldog, lives alone. She dates. Um, she, she's a, a sale, field sales director for a SaaS company and makes 120 K a year. So you want to, in the dem demographic portion, you want to be as specific as possible as to her just how she is in life, right? Like, so her job, her family, uh, the, in this case, it's her, but your persona, right? Like, do they have kids? Where do they live? Are they in a suburb? Do they drive a, a car? Do they walk to work? Well, that's in the habits, but uh, so the, their, their family, their income, their location, their work. And then in the habits section uh, is really about what they do, right? So Zena in this case works out at Soul Cycle. She goes to happy hour once or twice per week. She travels for work a lot. She walks to work. That's why she decided to move to Uptown Oakland. Uh, she loves to go wine tasting. Packs. Uh, she has a packed calendar of events uh, between work, self care, and social. Uh, so basically the habits is everything that goes in her life, that she does in her life, her activities. Um, and while we're doing this, we're really just painting the picture and putting ourselves in their shoes of our persona. And then the bottom right uh, portion are their needs. So we already established that in this case, Zina is super, super busy. So what does she need? She needs convenience. She needs ease. Um, we already uh, talked earlier that she likes to dress well, um, gets her hair and uh, nails done. So she needs to feel special. She needs to feel like she's in the know. Um, she travels a lot. She lives in Uptown. Like we're trying to paint this picture to really extract the needs. Um, she needs to feel like she has the best, the best products, right? The best value and good value. So this is a fun way to really build your persona and get some details. So let's try this for your persona. Who's your target market? Uh, give them a name. Jot down some, some ideas of demographic. Where do they live? We're going to take two minutes to do this. So it's going to be fast. Uh, where do they live? Talk about their family. How much money are they making? What are their habits? What do they do on the weekend? Um, and then what are their needs? Write down as many ideas that come to mind. You can narrow down later. Sometimes you start seeing that things contradict. Come back to it.
Again, do they have pets? Do they need to drive kids to soccer practice? Do they need moments to themselves? Do they need self-care? Do they need um, appreciation? Do they need validation? Great. So let's move on. Hopefully you're starting to get a little idea of like the pieces coming together, um, but they will even more uh, further down the line. So the next portion of the positioning is your unique value prop proposition. Some people call it your value prop, your unique value prop. Uh, so why are customers investing in you? So we're going to answer three questions here. One is what problem are you solving? Um, so your problem statement will be honest, it will be specific, it will be short. Um, honest is very important. Really question yourself if you're really solving a problem that exists. And now we already drew the persona. So make sure that the problem and you can start writing down your ideas if, you, if they come. Um, your problem, it, well, basically the problem that you're solving, is it a problem that you're solving for your persona you just drew? So examples of a problem statement would be um, no accessible underwear for disabled people. Uh, I just saw this, this, this new startup. that It was fascinating. They were doing underwear for disabled people people would, and it was a real problem. Um, so no, no affordable flower shop in uptown Oakland is a problem statement. So second, uh, what makes you different? What is your unfair advantage? So we wanna ask ourselves, what makes you different than existing solutions? What will help you win? and what will make you stand out. Examples of that could be the team, it could be your expertise, it could be your network, a new technology, funding, knowledge, a secret recipe, a location. All these are things that will help uh, make you different and win in the marketplace. And third, what unique solution are you offering to solve a problem uh, to solve the problem? So we define the problem in number one. We define number two, what makes you unique and different and why you will win. And then we want to create a solution, a, a solution statement that is unique to you. So again, we're honest, specific, and short. Uh, example based on the examples I gave earlier accessible underwear for disabled people delivered to their door. So in that case, the problem was that we're solving is we're creating accessible underwear, but we're also delivering it to, to their door. Um, the other one was an affordable flower shop in Uptown Oakland in partnership with The Hive. Um, the Hive is a community in Oakland um, that brings in their unique advantage that they're partnering. They have a lar large network. So that, and their location is also uh, what makes them win. So for you, let's take a, a minute and a half to try to try that on. So what problem are you solving? What makes you different? And what's your unique solution? Another example of Casper, the problem they're solving is people is not, are not getting a good night's sleep. They're not getting a rest. 
what makes them different materials, expertise, technology, the team to bring it to market. So what's their unique solution is a memory foam mattress delivered to your door risk-free. more seconds, write down the high level ideas. Great. So this was kind of an overview of your positioning. So now you have uh, an idea of your mission, of your vision statement, right? Your vision, your mission, why you exist in the world. You have your values, which is how your company, your brand is going to conduct itself in the world. Uh, you have your target audience, who, who is your persona, and then you have your unique value proposition. So that's starting to form a super strong base and foundation for your brand. And the base of actually what you want to communicate, because we said earlier, the brand is a, is a method of communication when you're not in the room. So you have to be super, super strong, super clear about your positioning, uh, the positioning of your brand. Any question before we move on to the next section? Ready to roll? How are we feeling? So far, so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the download. I'm taking notes. I'm like, ooh, I, I, I got. There's some good stuff here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Write yeah. down frantic. <laughs> good, good. No, there, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot for sure. And of course, at the end, you'll see how it all comes together. Um, so in the essence, we're going to talk about um the emotional, visual, and voice components of your brand. Uh, so this is where we're going to go through um, building the brand elements. Uh, we're going to look at color theory, typography, photography, very high level. Uh, there's a lot of examples, but we'll go through them quickly. We can ask questions later. And then at the end of the, the deck, there's also a motion sec this section. So building the brand elements is we like to call it first we diverge. <laughs> so what that means is really a moment for exploration, right? It's a moment where you can just be free, let your mind roll, like just there's no like thinking inside the box, obviously like do what you want with the box. Um, it's a moment where there's no right or wrong answers. It's time to nerd out, dig in, explore, play. Um, this is really a time to um, explore everything that you wouldn't even know. And we love to do that in teams. You can do it alone, of course, uh, but we love to do it in teams too because like, there's a bunch of different things that we didn't think about. And then you grab onto this idea and then you grab out and then you explore and diverge and diverge um, and then throw out all the ideas. And we call that a brain dump. Brain dump meaning you just write down everything that comes to mind and no right or wrong answers. So we do this portion in three sections when it comes to brand. Uh, first, we define um, what it feels like, or we explore, we don't define, we explore what it feels like. Um, so that's the emotional aspect of your brand. So what, are your, what does your brand communicate as an emotion. So it's easy, it's welcoming, it's warm, it's exciting, knowledgeable, it's scientific, it's fun, it's energetic, it's professional, innovating, innovative, inspiring, it's aspirational. Um, of course, these are just examples, right? What does, what's the emotion that you want your people to get uh, when they see your brand? 
Second portion is what does it look like? Uh, so this is more of the visual aspect, right? So is it uh, minimal? Is it peaceful? Is it exciting? Is it busy? Is it plush? Is it warm? Is it uh, inviting, future forward, traditional, inviting, unique, controversial? I, again, these are just uh, examples. There are many, many more. And the third part is what does it sound like? So that's when we start bringing in the voice and tone of the brand, right? So does it sound, and I love these because people throw in so many, when it comes to sound, <laughs> people throw in all sorts of different things. So does it sound educated, researched, experienced, wise, witty, funny, supportive? Does it sound like Gandalf? Um, is it a aha moment? It sounds like a poem. I've had, it sounds like birds chirping. Um, so what does it sound like? Then you'll define later on, you know, what that means. But now we're still in the open box um, and diversion and exploring. So let's try that on. Uh, for your brand. One, what does it feel like? Two, what does it look like? Three, what does it sound like? So what does it feel like? Emotions. What does it look like? It's visuals. And what does it sound like? The voice, voice and tone. So let's take a minute and a half to just write down everything that comes to mind. In a few seconds. Great. So that should have gotten your your juices flowing, your ideas going. Um, be the cat. Don't don't. Don't be in the box. Um, and sometimes you need to look at other brands and other things in the world to inspire yourself, right? And everything, I say everything is a remix uh, because we're all inspired by other things in life, whether it be art, whether it be another brand, whether it be how our friends are dressed, whether it be a movie, like we're taking inspiration from everywhere. Uh, and there's no... This is not wrong, right? Like, they're like, oh, no, you copy. You're not original. Nothing is original. Nothing. Like, <laughs> everything is, nothing is original and everything is original. Everything that we create in this world is taken by what we have personally experienced, right? And then we take it to another level. So what that looks like is we copy, don't really copy, but we, we, we borrow, then we transform it, we add our flair to it, and then we combine different elements that we like. And then that's your creation, right? And that's what's unique and that's what's original. But it was all started by something else. So um, you can do this, the best way to do this is with mood boards, right? Uh, start putting ideas together. Remember what you just you know, went through. You wrote down what it feels like, what it looks like and what it sounds like. So then start going out in the world and finding examples of something that um, feels 
fun and girly or something that feels strong and powerful or something that feels luxe and sophisticated. Uh, something that sounds, you can even put like uh, examples of, of, of text, right? That is, if you want to be funny and witty or if you want to create aha moments or quotes or what whatnot, put that in your mood board. And then you will start seeing it all come together. So um, now we're going to go through visual elements like color, typography, photography, and um, that are that are all specific elements that you see in these mood boards and that you would put in your mood board um, that influence how your brand communicates. So as we're going through them, jot down. There's not going to be a specific time to uh, explore these, but anything that comes to mind, draw, jot down your ideas. So colors can often speak louder than words, right? Um, there's a bunch of color theory out there. Um, they're all very similar, all a little different. So you take these with a grain of salt, but these are really how people in general react to color. And I say in general because there's a whole other class to talk about accessibility and how people see color differently. Right. <laughs> uh, but in general, when we're looking at brand, um, these are what you're looking at. Right. There's um, it, the red is excitement, uh, pink, purple, creativity, uh, orange, optimistic, green, reassurance, balance, growth. The blues are about uh, authority and trust and intelligence. Um, and the yellows are confidence, happiness, enthusiasm. And there's a um, there's a link at the bottom at the bottom to uh, dig in more, and you'll see there's there's plenty of ways to illustrate those. But this is these are the basic principles, right? So if you're looking at the Whole Foods logo, which is green, the branding is green. It's about growth. It's about refreshing. It's about hope, balance. Uh, if we're looking at the Topo Chico brand, it's definitely high energy and excitement. That brand, right? And IKEA is um, trust, honesty, authority. And then the yellow part is about the enthusiasm and the happiness and the friendliness. And you see that throughout their brand, their advertising. Uh, in addition to the actual color sections, there's also the shades, the tints, and the tones to pay attention to. Those also communicate um, different, different emotion to the brand. And it's it just, it's clear to see, right? It's easy to see in these examples that it gives a very different perception uh, on these both sides, right? Like the orange side, the bright orange is vibrant, it's energetic, it's fun. And then you have the navies and like muted colors. So they're toned down colors. Uh, it's very moody, it's mysterious. It gives a sense of um, luxury, a sense of authority. So that's how you play with color. Oh. And then typography. Um, your typography is the fonts that you will be using to represent your brand. They should be legible, accessible, memorable, and communicate the brand personality as every other element. Uh, you have to, it's a great, you should make sure that any text that you create in your brand uh, if you're styling fonts, it should be easy to understand in large and in small letters. So anytime you create <clears throat> either a logo or a poster or a anything that, that, that has text on it, make sure that it's very legible when it's small, legible when it's big. And also when you choose your typography, make sure that it looks good in caps and in lowercase because you will need both along the way. So we're going to look at messaging a little further down the line, but words is what gives the meaning and the some part of the communication, but the type is really the spirit of it, right? That brings it to life. We are um, going to go over just high level theory of typography 
So we're going to go over three, the traditional um, categories of uh, typography. So first is the serif font. Um, we're not going to go through in details, but basically those are about tradition, uh, authority, um, integrity, they're respectable, they're honest. On the left, we have Whole Foods, Patagonia, the Warriors, um, all have a serif font, but used in a very different way. So the Whole Foods logo is a serif font, but it's a very rounded edge, which communicates warmth and um, well, it, that is welcoming and friendly. Uh, same with the Pat Patagonia. And the Patagonia is actually more chunky, which represents grounding. Like they're very much about the earth. Um, and their letters are very much together, which is very community driven. And the warrior is, is very strong letters, right? Sharp edges, straight. This is really about the authority and we're here. We're here to win. <laughs> Then the sans serifs um, are about being modern, clean, contemporary, elegant, chic. Uh, here we have open AI. It's also very straight to the point and direct. That's what the open AI is. Um, the intelligentsia, which I cannot say, but that coffee brand uh, used all caps. Uh, but played with their, 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 they have a little curve in it, right? Um, and it's very spaced out. Um, and that really represents a little sophistication and chicness and un uh, uniqueness. And Glossier went with a more italic way to do the very traditional. And with the dot, this actually represents, um, there was a, I forget the name of the artist, but there is an eight artist in the 80s. It's very supremish, supreme, if you know the brand uh, Supreme. Um, so it's very straight to the point, but with a little flair moving moving forward. When, when people use the angle, it creates movement. It uh, mentions movement. And then script. Um, Script is a lot of things. Uh, it can be elegant, it can be flamboyant, it can be playful, it can be classical, it can be done in multiple different ways. Here, milk uh, is a pastry shop uh, and restaurant in New York. They're very playful and flamboyant. All birds here, it's very interesting what Alberts did here because it's a very sans serif font that they transformed into a script. Um, so to me, that's pretty exquisite. It's playful, but still very grounded. And Ch Topo Chico, that's just a lot of fun and flamboyant, flamboyant and loud. And then another thing that you can do I, once you know these these different types of fonts and you can go and mix them or create your own, right? So MoMA here, they played with the empty space. So they have the small O and the caps and the others, which is very playing with space that they're a museum, right? Like just spatial expression makes a lot of sense for them. Um, Tesla made their own. They basically cut out pieces. It, it really shows... To me, it shows technology, futurism, and also some. there's something stable about it when you look at the E. It's like a sculpture, you know? Um, Duolingo, very rounded, very friendly, very uh, bubbly. And Vans extended their V for that, that represents their skateboard culture. Um, so those are just different ways uh, that you can try to play with fonts to create your brand. Then, we, then photography. Uh, we're not going to get into motion, but motion is very similar to type uh, to photography in this case. So it should quickly show the emotion, uh, perceived value of your brand, and your values. 
And yes, it's it's redundant. We've all heard it. We still have to say it <laughs> because it's true. The image represents uh, a thousand words. So we're going to go through uh, photography style ele elements to keep in mind whenever you use photography. So first there's your color palette, right? Do you want all your photography to be one color palette to emphasize a mood? Or do you want it to be all sorts of different? The saturation. Um, a bright saturation communicates vibrancy and life. And the desaturated version is more moody, it's relaxed, it's peaceful. It can be used in luxury as well. Your shadows. A very strong shadow, like in this case, is very opinionated to the point in your face. Uh, using soft shadows will create an element of, of yeah, softness, right? Of welcoming, of, of, of peace. Then lighting. Uh, in this case, they're using outside bright lighting. It's very cheerful, right? If you're using um, an inside setting, in a dark setting, and it's flashlights, then that would communicate mystery um, and possibly luxury as well. So depending on the lights that you use, um, the golden light, the golden light, which is the four hour, 4 p.m. light, where everything looks nice and golden, you know, that that's very bohemian, that's very beach-like. Your composition, um, in this case, in this example, do you want to communicate abundance? If you're doing a close-up, it can communicate luxury or craftsmanship, right? So the composition of, of your picture really shows emotion and tells a story. Your backgrounds, you want nature backgrounds. Is it a shoot on the street? Is the street the background? Uh, are you cutting out the elements and putting it on the flat color? Are you doing a flat color with some shadows? Are you doing a gradient as in this context, as in this example? I'll give a different mood to your brand. Next, the type of photography. Are we talking about product photography? Lifestyle photography, uh, with or without humans, with maybe only hands, you know, what type of photography are we talking about? The models is, uh, well, it actually clearly defines the direction of your brand and your target persona. When you use uh, a model, people see themselves interacting with your brand. So that's a clear definition of who your target is. And finally, the treatments. Are we using filters? Are you using color overlays for dramatic effects or lively effects? That all uh, can impact the mood and how you use photography. So here are a few examples. Here we have anthropology. Uh, they used muted colors. There's your golden golden hour photography. It's uh, earth tone, jewel tones, desaturated, natural dramatic light. Um, at the bottom right, you see the use of shadows, right? The, the, the soft shadows. And it's very lifestyle photography. And that communicates a bohemian look, earthy, organic. Then we have a brand like Patagonia, which is, uh, again, using the golden light, nature settings, people in action, and large, grandiose backgrounds, really making the person, making us realize that we're small people in this big earth, right? If we remember, Patagonia was communicating, not doing armed, uh, harm to the earth, right? They're all about climate change. Um, and what that communicates is, um, and obviously, they're about exploring. Uh, so that com co communicates exploratory, adventure, and nature focus. And finally, we have Everlane. Uh, they, their photography is very minimal. It's artsy, uh, focused on the model and the clothes, and they use backgrounds that are very tonal. 
and that communicates high quality, uh, functional clothing, and elegant. So that's kind of your essence of the brand. Um, we talked. We started talking about how we can explore what the brand, what you want the brand to feel like, to look like, to sound like. So it's starting to form. We talked about creating these mood boards, and now you're going to start thinking about applying. How do you want to apply color to the brand? How do you want to apply typography, and how do you want to apply uh, photography? And motion is another thing that you can see at the end of the deck, at home, on your own time. Um, those are all elements that that really play well with the first section that we talked about with your positioning, right? So everything should be coming, starting to come together right now. Any question before we go through the last section of messaging? How are we doing? How are we doing? I'm forcing. I'm. I'm forcing your thumbs up. I'm not like super. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm low bias over here. I love this stuff. Um. So <laughs> the last section, the messaging. So how are we communicating your value? We're going to go through. So some are very similar to the previous sections, but now we're starting to re refine a little bit. So we're going to talk about your value proposition, your tagline, and your messaging pillars. The messaging, again, is what you're saying. And then the voice and tone that we explored before, right? What does it sound like? Is really the personality that you're adding to your message. And again, we're going through this pretty quickly, but it takes time to craft something that moves people, that touches people, that is straight to the point, that is clear and resonates. So we're playing. So first off, your value proposition. Um, it should be simple. It should explain both the functional and the emotional benefits of your product and service. Basically, it's the value that people get from your product or your service. It specifically, um, it specifies how your brand solves a problem and why people should choose you. So we, as in brand name, help X, which is your persona, do Y, so that's their problem when they're trying that that's the the do why is kind of a merge of your persona's needs and the problem you're solving. Doing Z, that's your unique solution. So let's try that on for your brand. We're going to take a minute and a half to jot that down. So who do you we the brand? Help X is your persona. Do Y, what are you helping them to do? And how are you helping them to do that? And you already have a lot of those answers if you look back at your notes. A few more seconds. Great. Second part, your tagline. So your tagline is something that's short, simple, clear. It's catchy and snappy. And it's a combination of your 
positioning and your value proposition. Um, so as few words as possible, it's a short line, it's not a paragraph. Focus on the emotion. What do you want people to feel when they read the tagline? So here are a few examples. Coffee House Press, their tagline is where good books are brewing. So right away you get that they're, they they sell coffee and they have books, right? Uh, Casper, the best bed for better sleep. Tra Travelocity, I, I love that one. Wander wisely. So they're providing um, travelers with information. Um, iPad, like a computer and unlike a computer. I also love that one. So let's try that on. Something catchy, again, you won't get to the final product right now, but jot down some ideas in a minute of what your tagline could be. So it's a combination of what you're offering, what makes you special, what makes you different, Also think about your persona's needs because you want to speak to their, emo you, this, this should be emotional. What are you solving for them? And how do they feel once it's solved? Can they sleep? Can they feel safer? Can they feel relieved? Great. And third portion and last portion of the messaging is your brand messaging pillars. Uh, they're value pillars. Um, why people will go and choose you? What are your offering? What are the benefits, basically? Try to keep those at three. People understand things in threes better. So you're trying to categorize. You, you probably have many different values and benefits, right? Um, but try to categorize uh, in three. So why is it that people will adopt your product? And then you add in supporting points to all those pillars. So an example uh, for Everlane is their, their three pillars are exceptional quality, ethical factories, and radical transparency. And that's why people will buy from them and what makes them different. And then they have points to support those, right? So you deserve to know how much close, close costs in radical transparency. Uh, we reveal the true production cost. We remove the traditional markup as examples. So let's try that for you. What are three brand pillars Three reasons why people will choose your brand or your company. And we'll take a minute and a half to go through.
And this will take time to refine, just write the big ideas and direction for it. Few more seconds. Great. So now you have a framework for messaging and we looked at your voice and tone already, what it sounds like and the personality. So now is the time to bring those two together and start communicating with the world, right? So that's how you're going to connect emotionally with your target. Here are a, fun, a few fun examples. Um, Heinz grown, not made. So that three words they use, right? Of course, there's a lot of other copy, but that's the only thing you see. Um, and with their font, it feels like grandma made it. It feels like grandma uh, with that color as well, you know, grew the tomatoes in the backyard and, and made a sauce and gave it to their neighbors. Uh, Oatly. The, they're super funny and they're really showing their personality here. Um, we set, spent an insane amount of money on this fancy billboard and we hope that someone who likes oat milk uh, sees it, right? <laughs> so that's really showing. Um, and they have their big fonts on there. That's really showing that they're funny, they're witty. They don't take themselves too seriously. Um, and Argos is funny. This is about like, they, they create products that are just useful and straight to the point. Right. And they used their copy to do that. Open sit and flush. That's it. <laughs> so those are ways that you can use words with your messaging, with your voice and tone, and then bringing the, the here, the, the look is minimal, right. And everything is minimal. So we're, they bring in the photography, basically all the brand elements in here. So that's kind of messaging high level. Uh, of course, it takes a lot of time to really narrow down these three words, right? That makes sense for everyone. Uh, but it gives you a, an idea of how you can start crafting it. And then on a final note, consistency, consistency is key. So when you do pick your direction on colors, typography, voice tone, all that stuff, keep using it, right? Because if you use something different everywhere, people won't know your direction. You won't be able to create loyalty. Consistency really starts building brand recognition. And that's how you build your broad tribe. That's how people stick to you. That's how people share because you get them excited and every time they come back, they get the same experience. And they come to you for that personality and that experience. And test, learn, iterate. Uh, consistency, yes, but also you can pivot. If something is not working, it's okay to like gently pivot. Uh, we've all seen companies rebrand and they make a big announcement about their new logo and their new colors and stuff like that. Um, but it's just, this is just a note about talking to your target customer and learning about uh, how they feel about the brand. Uh, build your community, talk to them. How do they feel about the brand? And again, just benefits of a strong brand. Uh, you increase your customer loyalty. We talked about that. You can increase your pricing, actually. It's much easier. Doesn't mean you have to, but... Uh, if you're strong in your foundation, people will want to pay for it. Uh, and it's easier for marketing efforts as well, because you're already building the tribe and you have a brand communicating for yourself when you're not there. And remember, every time you spend money, we're casting a vote for the kind of world we want and the kind of world we want to build. Um, so that's your customers, right? Communicate what you stand for. 
they will put their money to create a world that they want. And that's it for me. Um, there's a bunch of exercises. I'm going to open it up for discussion and like questions and all that stuff, but there's a bunch of other exercises and extra, um, extra content in the deck, but that's enough. <laughs> so Amazing. Thank, thank you, you so much, Melissa. That was fantastic.